Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can schedule meetings faster using an add-in called Microsoft Find Time. And as full disclosure, before we jump into this, I work at Microsoft as a full-time employee. My HR department requires me to say that anytime I talk about Microsoft products. So first off, what is Microsoft Find Time? Well, anytime you're trying to set up a meeting with a lot of people, with people who have busy calendars, or maybe people who work outside of your organization and you can't even see their calendar, trying to find a meeting time takes a long time. And you know, I actually joke that sometimes trying to find the meeting time takes longer than the meeting itself. And now this is something that affects students, whether let's say you're trying to meet with classmates on a project, uh, it happens at workplaces a lot where you're trying to meet with colleagues. It's just so complicated. What tends to happen is you have these long email threads going back and forth where different people will throw in different times that work for them and you try to find a time that sticks for everyone, but you get these massive chains where you know maybe you have 15, 20 responses. The find time add-in aims to solve this. And the way the find time add-in works is let's say that I'm a meeting organizer, I'm trying to find a time that works for everyone. What I could do is I can propose a few initial times and then people can go in and they can vote on those times. Maybe none of my proposals work for people. Uh, people could go in and throw in an additional proposal and then we all vote on it. And once we find a time that works for everyone, find time on my behalf, will go ahead and schedule the meeting for me, uh, saving me lots and lots of time. Now, before we jump into this and I show you how to use Find Time, uh, I just wanted to just make a quick mention that Find Time is really near and dear to my heart. Uh, this is a project that I got to work on at Microsoft when it was uh, in the Microsoft Garage. The Microsoft Garage is an incubation program at Microsoft where you have small teams of people uh, solving real customer challenges. And it turned out that Find Time really resonated with a lot of people. It saved people tons and tons of time. And now it graduated to become an officially supported supported add-in uh, by the Outlook team. So uh, pretty neat to see that whole process end to end. Uh, so enough talk, why don't we jump on the PC and first off I'll show you how you can get the Find Time add-in and then I also want to show you how you can use Find Time. Sound good? All right, let's jump on the PC. Here I am on my PC and to get Find Time what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the website findtime.microsoft.com. This is where we are going to install Find Time. Now, before we install Find Time, a little Easter egg on here. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's a cartoon video that talks about what Find Time is. If we go ahead and play this, scheduling a meeting across organizations, you means might recognize with you might recognize the voice on there. That is your Kevin Stratford speaking on there. This is a video that I got to pull together as part of the Find Time project. So back to getting Find Time. What we're gonna do is on this page, you'll see two different buttons. What we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and install Find Time. Now, just a word on who can install Find Time. You either need an education account, so an education Microsoft 365 account, or you need a workplace Microsoft 365 account. If you have a consumer account, either free or a paid Microsoft 365 consumer account, unfortunately you won't be able to use Find Time. You have to go to a school or a workplace that has Microsoft 365. As long as you have those, you will be able to install uh, Find Time for free. So let's go ahead and we're gonna click on this button. And what I'm gonna do is first off, I need to agree to the terms of use and I also need to agree to the privacy statement. And then there's also an option to get email announcements and updates. I'd recommend doing that anytime new features come out, you'll be notified about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on I'm ready. What it'll do now is it'll prompt me to log in. I'm gonna go ahead and select my username, go ahead with the password and sign in. I'll go ahead and stay signed in. And what this will do now is this will kick off the installation process. Here you see that it's installing and now it's been installed. Now what's neat is it congratulates me for installing it. And now right down here, I can see how I can access Find Time if I'm using Outlook Desktop, if I'm using Outlook on the web, or if I'm using Outlook for Mac. So with any one of these uh, different uh, Outlook versions, I am able to access Find Time. So what I'm gonna do is today I am using the latest and greatest version of the Outlook desktop client uh, on a Windows PC. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and show you how you could use it there, but you could use it on the web or on Mac just as easily. 
Here I am in my inbox and there are two different ways you can initiate a meeting poll. One of them is by replying to an email, the other way is by kicking off a new email thread. So in this case, I have an email from, looks like myself to myself, but let's imagine that a different person sent this to me and we're having a thread back and forth and it turns out that we should meet about some topic. What I could do is up here in the top right hand corner, there's an option to reply with meeting poll. This will kick off find time. And the other way that I can kick off a meeting poll is I could click on new email up here. This will kick off a new email message and here too I have the option to create a new meeting poll. Now before I can click on new meeting poll, what I need to do is I need to decide, well who even is going to vote on a time of when we should meet? So I need to add a few different people to the two line of my email. Email. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few people. So I've put two people on here and it turns out that Adele and Emily, they tend to have very busy calendars and it's always difficult finding meeting times with them. So using find time will be a big help here. I also, let me go ahead and just enter a subject. All right, I entered in a quick subject here and this all looks good. So let me go ahead now and click on new meeting poll. What will happen now is find time will load and I see this initial interface. I'm gonna walk through and just talk about what you can do here. Uh, so here, the first thing that I'm able to do is I could select a duration for this meeting. So anywhere from 15 minutes to eight hours or even I could choose a custom amount of time. I'm gonna go with a 30 minute meeting and then I could either select whether I want the meeting to happen during work hours, which is the default, or I could turn that off and just say any time during the day. Now the, by either toggling this on or off. The impact of that is for the different proposed uh, times that I see down below. Uh, here I have the entire day to choose from. Here it limits it to my work hours that are set in Outlook. I could also go ahead and choose the time zone that I want to use for scheduling the meeting. And then here I see a calendar view with a bunch of times. Let's walk through this for a moment. So here one of the things I could see is this is my next week coming up. And so what I could do is I could click through the days of the week. This is Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Friday. And then I see times throughout the work day. So here all the way from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so what I can do then is I could select different times and I could propose different times. So here maybe on Monday I wanna say 9 a.m. and maybe I also propose 2 p.m. I could also click on Tuesday and maybe I wanna choose, maybe let's say 10 a.m. on Tuesday and maybe I here I'll choose, let's say a 4 p.m. meeting. And so I could go through and propose different times. Now one of the things that's interesting down here, I see green on the days here. This indicates what days tend to work the best for my required attendees. Now my required attendees are on the two line, any optional attendees are on the CC line. Now one of the things I could do is I see these three different people icons. If I hover over, this tells me who the individual is. So I have Adele here and then I also have Emily here and they happen to be in the same organization so I could see if they're free or not. But if there was someone outside of my organization, I wouldn't be able to see if they were free or not and that's where a meeting poll really comes in handy. Now one of the things I could do too is I could also sort this list uh, specifically by time or I could sort it by availability but everyone's available here and so it's just showing me uh, the time straight up. But let's say I chose availability, it would show me at the top the time when most people are available all the way down to when least uh, number of people are available. If I click on this 10 a.m. proposed meeting time, if I go over and click on this calendar icon, what it'll do is it shows my calendar with the suggested time and it shows what's immediately before the meeting and what's immediately after the meeting. So maybe I don't wanna schedule the meeting immediately after a meeting that tends to run long. This just gives me some context as to where I'm placing this meeting on my calendar. Okay, I've gone ahead now and I've selected four different times. What I wanna do now is I'm gonna click on next. Now, what this will ask me to do next, I can enter a meeting location. So maybe I wanna say Kevin's office. And what I can do then is I could toggle on or off whether this is gonna be a Microsoft Teams meeting. So in this case, I wanna include Teams, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Now, I also have a few other options. If I click here, I could either hide these options or I could show the options. By default, I see all the different options. And here, one of the options says, notify me about poll updates. So if someone votes on a time or maybe someone suggests a new time, I'll receive an email just letting me know about that. 
In the second position, schedule when attendees reach consensus. So if all of us vote on a meeting time and there's agreement on a time, Find time will automatically schedule it for me. I could turn that on or off. And lastly, there's an option that says hold selected times on my calendar. If I have that turned on, it'll put a placeholder meeting on my calendar just so no one uh, overbooks or books on top of that held spot on my calendar. Uh, so I could turn that on or off. And once again, I could review all my selected or proposed times down below. If I click on the X, I could remove the time proposed, but all of these times look good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the email now. So what's nice about this is it inserts it into my email message, so here I can also add some additional context. What I've done is I've written a little bit of text in here and I see exactly what the email message is going to look like. So it says who the organizer is, what the duration is, it says there are four options provided, and then my, so Adele and Emily are going to come in and they're gonna select options uh, from the different proposed times that I uh, provided. Now some of the things that you could do is you could go back and edit the poll if let's say you wanna add an additional time and you can also view your invitation and votus, voting status by clicking here. I'll show you another way to get there as well. So this message all looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and send this now. So once I've sent the meeting invitation, what I wanna do is I'm gonna click on my calendar now. And one of the things, I set up these proposed times for next week, so I'm gonna click in here and you can see how fine time holds the time on my calendar, so I have all these tentative meetings. The reason they're tentative is we haven't reached consensus yet on a meeting time. Once fine time finds consensus, what'll happen is all of these holds will disappear and the final meeting time will stay on my calendar. So one of the things I wanna do is if you wanna to get to the interface where you could see who's voted, you could manage what the times are, maybe you wanna add some additional times. All I have to do is click into one of these proposed times. From within the placeholder on my calendar, what I could do is I could see the status or I could update times, and what I could do is I could also see all of my find time polls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click in to see the status and also update times. What I can see now is I could click into the organizer view or I can also click into the attendee view. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's click into the attendee view for Adele. And then I'm also gonna click into it for Emily so we could all vote on a meeting time that works. So let's start with Adele. So if Adele were to come in here, she would click on her name and she sees all the details of the meeting, what the duration is. And so what she can do now is she could go through and she can look at all of the times and she could vote on which one she prefers. So here, maybe 9 a.m., well, that's a little early, so no, I don't wanna do that. 2 p.m., you know, that sounds more reasonable, I'll say that. 10 a.m., you know, probably works, but yeah, 4 p.m., end of the day, that's the best time. I'm gonna go ahead and prefer that. Now, one of the things that Adele could do here is uh, she can also propose additional times. If she clicks on here, she could select another date and another time. But in this case, we're gonna stick with all the proposed times that are already here. Some of the things that Adele can also do, let's say that maybe I missed someone on the meeting invitation, she could go ahead and add additional people, or maybe she wants to add an additional option, uh, optional attendee. So she could click on here and add an additional name and an additional email address, and that'll then add them to the poll as well. But here, Adele is pretty satisfied with all the options, so she's gonna go ahead and vote. All right, so now Emily is here and she also wants to vote. Now what's nice here is Emily can see how other people voted, so that could influence her decision. So here she could see Adele did not like the 9 a.m. option, so maybe Emily is gonna go ahead and say, no, I don't wanna do that either. Here everyone said yes, here everyone said yes, but 4 p.m., she really prefers that, so I'm gonna go ahead and prefer that as well just to go along with Adele here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and vote as well. So now everyone has voted. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into uh, Microsoft Outlook, and one thing we'll see now, all of my holds have disappeared from the calendar, and find time went ahead and it automatically scheduled the 4 p.m. slot because that was the preferred slot, it worked for me, and then Adele and Emily liked that the most, and so if I click into this now, I'll see that the meeting has been scheduled and I also have the ability to join the Teams meeting. 
All right, well, that was a tutorial of how you could use Find Time to schedule meetings even faster. If you found this video helpful and you now know how to schedule meetings much more easily and you think you might save time, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, uh, please leave a comment down below. I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.